Good morning, friends. Welcome to story time. I'm so glad to see you here today. We have a special story time today. Today is actually Wednesday. I'm filming this on Wednesday so we can have it up for you on Thursday, tomorrow when you're going to watch it, but it's actually Wednesday. So yesterday was a very special day. I don't know if you can see my sticker. Can you see that? It has a, the American flag on it and it says, I voted. Did any of your moms and dads go vote yesterday? Yesterday was a special day called Election Day. And we're going to learn a little bit more about it after we sing our good morning song. Are you ready? If you have an instrument you would like to shake, you may go get it now. If you have a friend that would like to watch story time with you, I have a friend here. Here is my friend. I bet you you know who he is. Who is this? It's Curious George. Hi, Curious George. You'll find out why I have Curious George and I have a few other friends in the story time with me too today. You'll find out why in a few minutes. But Curious George is gonna help me with our good morning song. So let's sing. Are you ready? First, we're gonna clap. Can you clap, Curious George? He's got big hands, so we're gonna have him clap with us. Are you ready? Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Clap everybody and say hello. Hello everybody. I bet you he'd be a good jumper. Look at his legs. He's got really long legs. Do you think he can jump? Can you jump? Let's see if you can jump as high as Curious George can jump. Are you ready? Jump everybody and say hello. Jump everybody and say hello. Jump everybody and say hello. Hello everybody. Great. What else should we do? How about swing? Monkeys like to swing. Can you swing? Swing everybody and say hello. Swing everybody and say hello. Swing everybody and say hello. Hello everybody. We didn't have treats for him to swing to, but we can pretend, can't we? And our last one is wave. Are you ready? Here we go. Wave everybody and say hello. Wave everybody and say hello. Wave everybody and say hello. Hello everybody. Yay! Very good. Well, we're gonna have Curious George sit off to the side here until later when we need him again. But first, I wanna talk about our election. Does anybody know what we were electing. Do you know what it means to elect someone? It means you vote them in. So your mom and dads may have gone and voted yesterday. I did, that's why I got this sticker. Everybody has a special place that they go to vote. And yesterday we voted for a lot of different things. We voted for senators, for some proposals, for people to leave universities, be on their boards. We, the big one that we voted for was president of the United States of America. And that's our country. We're gonna find more out about election day and how, um, what election day is and how candidates get elected. But first, I have a fun story for you. And our story is called Duck for President. Wait a minute. I did not have Duck as a choice for President of the United States of America. Hmm. Do you think he's running for President of our country? That'd be silly, wouldn't it? Let's find out what's going on with this Duck here. This is the duck. If you've ever read Click Clack Moo, you know about this duck, don't you? Duck for President. And the author of our story today is Doreen Cronin. And our illustrator for this story is Betsy Lewin. And thanks to Simon and Schuster Publishers, um, we are able to read this on our YouTube channel to you. Well, look at here. There's Duck, looks like he's cutting the grass. And here goes uh, an airplane up in the sky and it has a banner. And it says V-O-T-E. 
E. Do you know what that spells? Vote. Vote. Hmm. Duck staring up at the sky. He's wondering. Aw. Somebody looks tired, huh? Running a farm. Oh, it's very hard work. Oh, oh. at the end of the day, end of every day, Farmer Brown is covered from head to toe in hay, horse hair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, muck, mud, and coffee stains. He doesn't smell very good either. Mm, P.U. The animals all have chores to do. What do the pigs have to do? They need to clean under the bed. Cows need to weed the garden. Sheep need to sweep the barn. And duck needs to take out the trash, mow the lawn, and grind the coffee beans. Hmm. Okay. At the end of each day, pigs are covered in lint bunnies from cleaning under the beds. Cows are covered in weeds from weeding the gardens. The sheep are covered in dust from sweeping the barn. And duck is covered in tiny bits of grass and espresso beans from mowing the lawn and grinding the coffee beans. Now, duck, he did not like to do chores. He did not like picking tiny bits of grass and espresso beans out of his feathers. Why is Farmer Brown in charge anyway, thought Duck. What we need is an election. He made a sign and hung it up in the barn. Here's what the sign says. Farmer Brown must go. Farm election tomorrow. Wow. The next morning, Farmer Brown found a poster on his front door. Vote duck for a kinder, gentler farm. Did any of you see any signs out in people's lawns that said people's names on them? That's kind of like this election poster that duck put up on the door. Well, I saw a lot of people with signs in their yards um, suggesting who to vote for. Farmer Brown was furious. He ran to the barn and he found the animals registering to vote. Voter registration. Let's see what their rules for voting are. Voters must live on the farm, must show valid ID, and be at least this tall. Well, Duck is crossing that one out. I think that might be a little hard because look who he's talking to, yeah. Those mice aren't gonna be able to vote, are they, if that's one of the rules. The mice got together and protested the height requirement, so Duck crossed it off. On election day, each of the animals filled out a ballot and they placed it in a box. The vote was counted and the results were posted on the, br on the barn wall. F. Brown got how many votes? What number is that? six votes. Duck got even more. Duck got 20 votes. Farmer Brown demanded a recount. One sticky ballot was found stuck to the bottom of a pig. Uh-oh. He didn't have it in his butt there. Uh-oh. The new tally was Farmer Brown, six. Duck, 21. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge. Uh-oh. How do you think this is going to go with the duck in charge of the farm? Running a farm is very hard work. At the end of each day, duck was covered from head to toe in hay, horse hair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. Running a farm is no fun at all, thought duck. That night, Duck and his staff started working on Duck's campaign for governor. Apparently, it wasn't enough for Duck to be in charge of the farm. He had bigger plans. So here's the signs, vote for me. I'm a duck, not a politician. 
Duck left Farmer Brown in charge of the farm and hit the campaign trail. He visited small town diners. He marched in parades. He went to town meetings. He gave speeches that only other ducks could understand. Mm -hmm. And on election day, the voters filled out their ballots in booths all over the states. The vote was counted and the results were posted in the local paper. Duck wins by a nose. Ms. Governor received 299,999 votes and Duck received 300,000. Guess what that means? Duck was the new governor. That means he's not just in charge of the farm. He's in charge of the whole state. Whoa. The governor demanded a recount this time. Two sticky ballots were found stuck to the bottom of a plate of pancakes. The horse found them. The new tally was Ms. Governor, 299,999, and Duck, 300,002 votes. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge of the state. Whew. Running a state is very hard work. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from head to toe in hairspray, ink stains, scotch tape, fingerprints, mayonnaise, and coffee stains. And he had a very bad headache. Running a state is no fun at all, thought Duck. That night, Duck and his staff started working on posters for the presidential election. So now he wants to be president and be in charge of the whole country. If he thinks being a, in charge of the state is hard work, whoa. Let's see, a duck for a change. Duck, making us proud again. I like duck. Duck left his staff in charge of the state and he hit the campaign trail. That the campaign trail is when you go out into the places where you're running for whether it was the farm or whether it was the state or now the country. So he's gonna go travel and meet the people that are gonna be voting for you. So Duck kissed the babies in local diners. He rode in big parades. He gave speeches that only other ducks could understand. He even played the saxophone on late night television. On election day, the voters filled out their ballots in booths all over the country, just like yesterday. The vote was counted and the results were announced on CNN. Mr. President who got 50,546,000 165 votes and Duck received 50,546,170 votes. Duck defeats the president. The president demanded a recount. 10 sticky ballots were found stuck to the bottom of the vice president. Look at that. Now the vice president is the partner of the president and he helps the president be in charge. So the new tally was Mr. President, 50,546,165. This didn't change, did it? Duck got the extra 10. 50,546,180 votes. Duck still defeats the president. The voters had spoken. Duck was officially in charge. <gasps> Whew. Running a country is very, very hard work. At the end of each day, Duck was covered from head to toe in face powder, paper cuts, staples, security badges, secret service agents, and coffee stains. And he had a very, very bad headache. Urgh. Running a country is no fun at all, thought Duck. 
here he is. That's the president's office. It's called the Oval Office because it's shaped like an oval. And that's in the White House. And that's where the president of America lives. He lives in a special house in Washington, D.C. called the White House. And that's his office with a duck in it. Only in storybooks, right? Then he checked the help wanted ads. Duck needed. No experience necessary. Must be able to mow the lawn and grind coffee beans. Duck left the vice president in charge and headed back to the farm. I guess he decided it was too much work being a president of a country, huh? At the end of each day, Farmer Brown is now covered from head to toe in hay, horse hair, seeds, sprouts, feathers, filth, mud, muck, and coffee stains. And Duck is currently working on his autobiography. Duck! Oh my goodness. Do you know what an autobiography is? That's a story someone writes telling other people all about their life. So he's writing a book. Instead of working at the farm like he was hired to do again, he is writing a book. So let's see how what he says. Four score and seven years ago. No, nope, he didn't like that start. The only thing we have to fear. No, nope, he didn't like that start either. Ask not what your country. No, nope, he crossed that one off too. Here's one. Running a farm is very hard work. Hmm. And there we have it. Duck for president. So this was just kind of a silly, fun story. And this one was a fiction book. In one of our other story times, we talked about the difference between fiction and nonfiction. So this one was a story that somebody made up. We wouldn't really be able to have a duck be in charge of the United States of America. That one not We need to have a real person be in charge. This is a fiction book, but I also have a nonfiction book that I'm going to read to you today, too. And it's called Election Day. And this, you can see, has photos of real people. Nonfiction is a book that is true. It has facts in it. So we're going to read just a few parts of it. I'm not going to read the whole thing today, but this book will give you a little idea about an election. Because guess what? You guys are going to get to vote too. And I'll tell you what you're voting for after we learn about election day and this nonfiction book that will teach us some real things is written by patricia murphy do you know what an election is and look at there's a class and they have lots of posters kind of like duck had done the posters for the campaign vote for me so this one says vote for katya vote for kenneth Vote for Jacqueline. An election is when people get to choose or vote. Now you make choices every day. This girl is choosing what flavor ice cream she wants. Does she want peanut butter, banana, bubblegum, strawberry, cotton candy, raspberry, black cherry? What would she like on her ice cream? Hmm. Do you make choices too? What kind of choices do you have to make? Maybe what to have for breakfast. Maybe mama will say, would you like to have cereal for breakfast? Or would you like to have eggs for breakfast? Or maybe you get to choose what book you get to read, what book mom's gonna read to you. Maybe you get to choose what toy you're going to play with. Maybe you get to choose what clothes you're going to wear. We make all sorts of choices, don't we? Now we don't have to vote on all the choices, but we do get to vote for some things. In an election, 
people might vote on who they want to be a leader in their town, city, or state. Sometimes people choose what laws or rules everyone should follow. Now, in the United States, and you can see this is an older book, but it still has the right month. Because in the United States, there's a special day to vote, and it's called Election Day. Now, Election Day is the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November. Hmm. So let's see. Yesterday was November 3, and the first Monday in November was November 2. So yesterday was the first Tuesday after the first Monday in November, election day. People elect or choose someone to become the president of the United States every four years. And that's a hard job. To be president of the United States means that you are in charge of the whole country. Whew, Duck decided he didn't want to be that, right? That was too much work and it is a lot of work. So here is one of our, old, our, our former presidents. This is George W. Bush. Now I have to put in the W because his dad named George Bush was also a president. He was George H.W. Bush. So this is George Bush. So this was a little, uh, it was a, um, a while ago. Now, everyone has a chance to vote. You need to register or sign up to vote in an election. You must be at least 18 years old and you must be a citizen of the United States. So does that mean you could vote? Let's see. Um, are you a citizen of the United States? Are you at least 18 years old? I think we got you on that one, didn't we? Probably not yet. So you're gonna have to wait a little bit to vote in the presidential election. People vote in their neighborhoods. They can vote in a school, in a library. We had lots of people voting across, in the rooms across from the library yesterday. In a church, in a school, in a post office, they can vote all over. Ooh, here's a picture of a different way to vote. Many people use voting machines to vote. These machines have little metal bars next to each choice. Voters must pull the bars to make their choices. Now that's not what Mrs. Russell voted yesterday. Yesterday I had a paper ballot that I filled out and I had a pen that I had to color in the squares next to the people that I wanted to choose. I have never voted on a machine like this. Some people vote on paper. They use special cards called ballots and they mark their choices. Then they place their ballot in a ballot box. Now here's somebody putting their ballot in a ballot box. Now my ballot box was more like a computer. And so I had to kind of slide my paper into it and then it sucked it in to the machine and it counted my vote. So I went really early yesterday and my vote was number 41 at my polling place. So I was the 41st person to vote. And here's this young man putting it just in a box, but I had to put mine in a special machine, a ballot box. So now here's some words you know now. Ballot, that's what you fill out to decide who's going to show who you want to be in charge. Ballot box, where you put your ballot to cast your vote. Choose, we know what that word means, don't we? What are you going to pick? Election is when you vote for someone. President of the United States. And this one was George W. Bush. But right now, do you know who the president is? Right now, the president is Donald Trump. Two people 
were on, well, more than two, I think there may have been six or seven people were on the ballot for president yesterday. Each president can try to get two terms, and that means they could, if the people vote them back in, they could be president for up to eight years. So Donald Trump wants to be our president again, so he was running again, and the person he was running against, one of the people that, um, we have two parties, two main parties in America, called the Republicans and the Democrats. Have you heard about that? You may have heard those words on the news, but there's more than that, but those are the big parties all across the, the country. And so you may have heard Joe Biden. He's the other man that might be our president. Donald Trump might get to be our president again for another four years, or Joe Biden might get to be our president now. And he was our vice president before Donald Trump got to be president last time. He was our vice president with Barack Obama as president. It's also confusing, isn't it? It's kind of interesting when you learn about it. Let's see what other words we learned. Vote, we need to choose. Voting machine and register. Sign up to vote. All right. So now, friends, we are going to have our very own election. We are going to have a, just a fun little election. And we are going to have an election for who we would like for story time president. Which one do you think should be in charge of story time? Here's who's running. Let me introduce our candidates. Those are the people that are running. So like right now, the main two that are in the running for president, I can't tell you who is our president now because all the ballots still haven't been counted. Some of the states have had them all, gotten them all counted, but not all of them. So we still don't know even today who's our president. It might take a little while. We have to be patient to find out whether it's going to be Joe Biden or Donald Trump. We'll have to see. Maybe by next week, we'll see. But by next week, we will know who's going to be the story time president. So let me introduce our characters. Our first character was our friend that helped us at the beginning, Curious George. Do you think Curious George would be a good president for story time? He thinks so. Why do you think you would be a good president, George? Hmm. So George brought along a few things. One thing that the presidents do is they give us a lot of information about themselves to help us decide whether we think they should be president or not, whether they'd be good at being president. So I thought maybe we could look up some information. We could do our research. We could find out more about these candidates, the people that are running for story time president. So Curious George likes to travel and he will go all over the country. Here's a story about him in the big city. So George is not afraid to travel. He likes to travel. Okay, so that's good for a president. And George got a medal. Wow, that means he did something really special, doesn't it? So that's good if the president had a medal. I think he got his medal for being in the spaceship, didn't he? Let's see. Yes. He got the medal because he was the first living being to come back to Earth from a space flight. It says, on the medal it says, to George, the first space monkey. That's pretty impressive, George. And last but not least, Curious George plants a tree. George cares about the environment. George is originally from the jungle. So he likes to make sure and take good care of our earth. 
here he is with his friend man in the yellow hat. Maybe he could be your vice president, George. And they're planting a tree. That's good for our country, wouldn't it be? All right, so there's candidate number one. Here he is, George. Let's see who's next. Candidate number two. You know who this is, don't you? What's he missing though? His friend, elephant, and we need to have Piggy, of course. So, elephant is running for president and Piggy will be his vice president. We kind of talked about that in the story where the vice president is the one that helps the president get everything done. So he's kind of like his partner. But, so you can vote for elephant and Piggy for vice president. Why do you guys think you should be in charge? Let's see if we have some ideas here from their books. Let's see what the research shows us. Oh, I remember this one. Can I play two? Elephant and Piggy are very good at including everybody, aren't they? They figured out how to play ball with their little friend here. They worked it out. So they're very good at including everybody, no matter what. That's important in a president. Oh, here's another good thing. Should I share my ice cream? Hmm, elephant's thinking hard. Gerald? Yep, he had to think about it, but he did share his ice cream with Piggy. And that's what we need. We need somebody that's going to be good at sharing and not just think about themselves, but think about the rest of the people in the country. I think Elephant would do that. What do you think? Hmm. Or the rest of the people in the story time in our case. They're not running for president of America. All right, so our second candidate is Elephant and Vice President Piggy. Next, this candidate couldn't be with us today. So I have her picture. Who is this? Fancy Nancy. Now Nancy would like to be president of Storytime too. What do you think she could do for us? Nancy, I did some research. Nancy is very smart. She uses very fancy words. So she knows a lot and that's important. You have to be very smart to be president, right? You'd have to know a lot of things and be willing to learn if you don't know them. And Nancy likes to do that. So that would be good for president, wouldn't it? Ooh, and here's her book called Every Day is Earth Day. Nancy cares about the environment too, and she cares about taking care of the country or the story time room. So that's Nancy. Sorry she couldn't be with us here today. But she is our third candidate and our last candidate for president of story time is Pinkalicious. And she also would like to be president of Storytime. So I looked up a few things about her and I found she's very good at business. Pinkalicious and the pink drink. So she ran her own pink lemonade stand. So she has an idea about how to run businesses. And that's important because if you're president, then you're in charge of all the economy of the country or the story time room. So that's important to be good at business. And I found another one about her called Tickled Pink. And in that one, Pinkalicious shows us that she has a good sense of humor. And you want a president of the story, story time that 
is going to have a good sense of humor. Hmm. So what do you think? Who would you vote for to be president? And since they're not really going to be president of the country, we'll say story time president. Who do you think would be the best? Do you think Pinkalicious? Do you think Fancy Nancy? Gerald, elephant, and Piggy for vice president? Or Curious George? Who would get your vote? Now, we are going to have a story time vote. We are going to have you vote for who you think should be president. So, I have a ballot box. You might recognize it as our weekly drawing box that we use during Summer Reading Club. We're going to use it today to put our ballots in. And there will be two ways you can vote. Kind of like there are, are two ways you can vote for the regular election. A lot of people sent in what's called absentee ballots. And that meant if they couldn't make it in, they could get a ballot ahead of time and then mail it in. Well, we don't have time to mail your ballots in. So we're going to have a special link in our description for YouTube that says, has the ballot in it, and you'll get to choose online. Or you can come into the library and get a ballot and it says, ballot for story time president, choose one. Curious George, Elephant, and Piggy as VP, Fancy Nancy, Pinkalicious. And you're going to color in the box, just like Mrs. Russell did yesterday. You could only choose one of these names though. Who would be your choice for president? Hmm. And you can do that if you come into the library and you can just put it right in the ballot box. And then for next week, Mrs. Russell will announce who is the story time president. We'll count up the votes in the ballot box and we'll count up the votes on the computer and we will have our story time president. And we'll see if we have any news about who the president of the United States is. So you think about it, who would be best as president? Who would you cast your vote for? Hmm. I hope you had fun with our election story time and I will look forward to seeing who you vote for, for story time president and I will see you again next week. Bye-bye, friends.